Hey, Mike with Nerd Problems Gaming here, the channel where we go through the good and bad of everything nerdy to make sure you spend your time on the best of the best. In today's video, we'll be doing a review and how to play video on Epic Card Game Duels, so let's get into it. So Duels is a two-player starter deck for the Epic Card Game, and it plays very similar to Magic the Gathering and other similar collectible card games where players will battle it out to be the last surviving hero, using their cards to summon champions, use powerful spells, and more. But let's quickly dive into a bit on how you play the game so you have a better idea on how it works, and then I'll jump into my review after that. All right, now that we've got the game out, let's jump into the setup and how you play the game. So Epic Card Game Duels gives you a two-player starter deck, and the first couple things you wanna do to set up the game is to give each player a gold token, take out the first player token. You'll then wanna set out the piles for various champion tokens. So for example, you have the zombie tokens, the wild tokens, demon tokens, and human tokens. And they're also two-sided, so if you run out of one, you can just flip to the other side. You wanna give each player a health tracker token and then set each tracker to 30 health points so again just set it to 30 and then put it at the zero and again you can move this around in any various fashion to keep track of your health give each player a reference card so they have some guidance on taking their turn as well as insight on various keywords and game terms the next step you want to do is give each player their starting deck now basically there's four factions in epic duels blue white green and red and so it's wild evil good and sage and so when you first open up the game it has the decks together for wild and evil and then sage and good but after your first few times playing you can really combine any two of the four decks you want to create a player deck. Or if you want, you could basically take all of the cards, shuffle them together, and deal each player out 30 cards. At this point, now that each player has their starting deck, give them to each player. You can determine which player is going to be the first player, and then you're ready to start the game. So at the start of the game, each player is going to draw five cards. Also at the start of your turn, make sure each player has set their gold to one. So there's a gold side and a silver side. Gold means you have a gold left. Silver basically means you used your gold. Now, if you're the first player and it's the first turn of the game, you don't draw a card, but every other turn at the start of your turn, you'll set your gold to one, draw a card, and prepare your champions. So right now we don't have any champions out, but it just basically means that you can use their abilities and attack with that champion. And you would put them face up like this. Now on your turn, you can basically play unlimited cards with the zero here, as they don't cost gold, but you can only play one card with the one gold symbol. So meaning you'd need to flip over your gold to activate one of these gold cards and then you could play it. Now when we look at the card, you see the cost at the top, the faction they represent, their attack power, their defense power, what they are, so like a champion for example, and then other abilities they might have. So when it's your turn, you can take as many actions as you want, as long as you have the gold available to do so. So at this point, for example, I might play this champion as it's zero to play. But as you can see here, it has a tribute, which means once it's played, that power will activate. So when I play it, I can do three damage to a target. So I could target any of the opponent's player's champions, but at this point there aren't any, so I'll just do damage directly to that other player. And then their health would go down to 27. Now at this point, I still have gold available, and usually it makes sense to use gold on your turn because it will get restored on the other player's turn. So let's say I play this champion, so I'll use my gold, and it also has a tribute of dealing three damage to a target champion and then gaining three health. Now, unfortunately, there aren't any opposing player's champions out right now, so I'd actually have to pick one of my own champions and deal three damage to it. But I'll also gain three health, so I might as well just target myself at this point take three damage and then gain three health. I'd move my health up to 33. Now at this point, I can pass or I can battle. Now one thing to note, when you first put out a champion, it's considered to be deploying, unless it has the blitz attribute. And when a champion is deploying, they aren't able to attack the very first turn. So I can basically pass at this point. And now the opposing player would have a chance to play cards if they choose to. So. Right now, I can't really play any champions unless they say they have the ambush, which allows you to play them on another player's turn. But I could use this card, for example, as it's an event, so I could gain 12 health. So I think I'll do that. So this player would spend their gold, play this card, it goes in their discard pile, and now they gain 12 health. So I'd be up to 39 health for that player. Now, technically, it would go back to the first player to see if they want to 
take any other actions or they could attack if I was able to, but I'm not going to at this point. So I'll just be done with my turn. It now goes to the next player's turn. So on their turn, you'll flip over the gold again for both players. This player will draw a card and now they'll be able to take their turn. So again, I might play this one, a champion, and I can deal two damage to a target when it comes out. So I'll play that. I'll choose this as my target. So it gets destroyed, goes into their discard pile. Now I still actually could play a card from my hand. So let's say I do this one. I could play my gold, play this champion here. And again, both of those champions are deploying so I can't technically use them at this point so I'll pass and then it moves to the next player's turn so I have an ambush so I could play this guy if I want even though it's the other player's turn this one does not so I can't do that so I could play this one as well to draw two cards or break a target champion and whoever's turn it is they gain five health so I think maybe I'll just do this ambush for now so I'll play this ambush he also has a tribute of drawing two cards so i draw two cards and there's not really anything else i can do because i already spent my gold the other player isn't attacking so i'll just pass at this point again it would go back to that player to see if they want to do anything they don't at this time and then the turn would end so we'll flip back over now it's this player's turn so again i have some options of what i can do let's just do this one so you can see for an example it says put a wolf token in play so i'll spend my gold i'll use this and it has a lot of other things as well. So let's start with the wolf token. We'll go and play. Target wild champion gets plus two, plus two. So right now I just have the wolf token as my wild champion. So I'll do that. And then I draw two cards. So it doesn't look like I have any zeros yet. And then I already spent my gold. So now my wolf champion is now actually a 4-4 four, four instead of a 2-2. Two, two. And so I could attack at this point. It probably isn't the best strategy to based on my cards, but I will in this case just so you can see how it works. So I'm going to attack with this Dark One's Apprentice. So I'm attacking with 7 and it's airborne, meaning that it has flying ability. So only a champion of the defender that has airborne would be able to defend against this attack. They actually do have a champion with that ability. So this is a 9-9. Nine, nine. And so they're only attacking with seven and it only has seven defense. So it definitely makes sense for me to block with this champion. So I just simply turn it upside down to indicate that it's blocking. And then the damage basically happens simultaneously. And so this one will die or break in this case. And then the storm dragon is down to two defense left. So if on this turn, my player here had a chance to deal two damage, I could target that champion potentially and break it or just destroy it this turn now since this player is also attacking prior to calculating the attack and defense damage i potentially could play a card so i could technically play this one for my hand if i want because it does have the ambush so i could flip this over spend my gold it also has a tribute ability of putting three human tokens into play so i do that as well but again, even doing all that, it doesn't really affect the outcome because now I could have the option of blocking that airborne attacker, which I chose to do. And so then I would calculate the damage. This card would survive. That card would be defeated. And now I actually do have the option of attacking again if I chose to. So when you attack, you don't necessarily have to declare every single card that's attacking immediately. You could space it out throughout the turn. Now again, as this player, I'm going to choose to pass. And so now this player would still have the option to play cards if they chose to. However, I did use my gold at this point and I don't have any zero cards that are playable. So I will just pass as well. And so now this player's turn is over. We'll flip these over. Play will pass to this player here. They will draw a card and then play will continue back and forth in this fashion until one player reaches zero health points. Couple other things to note is that your hand limit size is seven cards. So if you ever have more than seven cards at the end of a turn, you need to discard down to seven cards in your hand. There are also several different keywords and game terms that you should be familiar with. I won't really fully explain them, but here's a screenshot of what they are. But again, you'll have this in front of you as you play and you can refer back to the rule book for more details on these as well. But outside of that, that's a general idea on how you play Epic Card Game Duels. So with that said, now that you have a better idea on how the game plays, 
let's jump into my review. Well, now that you guys have a better idea on how the game plays, how do I actually feel about it? So for me, as a fan of Magic the Gathering, I definitely enjoyed this game. I feel like it had a very similar feel to how that game plays, which definitely makes sense, as this game was created by former Magic Hall of Famers. I feel like the turn system can be a little bit confusing your first few times playing the game, unless again, like I said, you're familiar with games like Magic the Gathering. I know it was a little bit difficult to pick up when I played it with people that hadn't played that before. While me, having played Magic several times over the years, it was a little bit quicker to pick up on how the turn flow would actually work. But one thing that I definitely like about this that's a little bit different than games like Magic the Gathering is that you don't necessarily need to build up mana or resources to be able to play certain cards, and you never really get stuck with cards that you can't necessarily play on your turn, because each turn you have that gold, and so some cards will be zero gold to play, others will be one gold, and that's it. So you'll at least always be able to play a card worth one gold or worth zero gold once during your turn, and then again, those zero cards can play, you can play as many as you want. So it's kind of a cool switch on the strategy where you don't necessarily need to wait several different turns to build up enough mana or land or resources or whatever to be able to play very powerful cards, you can do that immediately. I also like that there's the different factions that you can play within the game. So you've got the Sage, the Good, the Evil, the Wild. Again, similar to Magic the Gathering with their different card types. But what's cool with this is again, you don't have to worry about that resource management. So you can really create any deck that you want. And since this is a self-contained game, you can even shuffle up all the cards and deal each player 30 cards and go from there. So you're not really limited by certain deck types or resource management like you are with games like Magic the Gathering. So that was kind of a cool shift on the game, which led to some unique strategies as you play. On top of that, if you do this randomized option, you really have no idea what's coming in your deck. So you really need to build your strategy on the fly, which further makes every single game totally different and really adds to the replay value of the game. Also, I'd say most games probably took around 15 to 30 minutes. So it's not a super long commitment to play around but again the game can get a little complex for players that aren't familiar with games like Magic the Gathering or various other collectible card games such as that. But I definitely like that it's self-contained. You don't have to worry about buying a bunch of expansions to the game unless you want to. You don't need to buy booster packs to get the best cards. It's just all self-contained in this game and I really like that. The artwork is super cool for the game. Again, it really has that Magic the Gathering feel and it's done very well for this game. It is a fantasy-based game. So you'll see various mythical creatures, zombies, knights, and more, which is definitely fun to see. So I think if you like collectible card games, games like Magic the Gathering, but you maybe don't want to have a huge investment of always trying to build this amazing deck or having to buy booster packs all the time, you'll get a very similar experience with this game, but without maybe the huge investment. So if you like strategy games where you're battling to be the last hero standing, I definitely think you'll like picking up this game and it'd be worth adding to your nerd library. But if you want to pick up a copy of this game, there'll be a link in the description below below where you can do so. And if you guys like this video, be sure to smash that like button as it really helps out the channel. And if you haven't done so yet, be sure to subscribe and turn on the bell notifications to get the latest updates of new nerd videos we put out. But if you'd like to help support the channel, pick out content and more, become a patron of ours at nerdproblemsgaming.com forward slash Patreon. And if you'd like to plug into our live streams and let's plays you do on the channel, you can follow us over on Twitch at nerdproblemsgaming.com forward slash Twitch. But once again, thanks for tuning in and we'll talk to you more soon.